All right, how's it going YouTube? So in this video, I just wanted to go over the things that I do to get the highest quality vertical video uploads for my Instagram reels or my TikTok videos or even my YouTube shorts. Since so short form videos become such a big part of social media in general right now, I know most people are just trying to figure out how can I upload the best videos that I can. So this was a process that took me a little while to figure out myself, but now that I've gotten the ball rolling, my editing has been faster, my filming process is faster and my videos are looking better than ever. So I wanna show you guys my process from the beginning all the way through and uh, just show you kind of the major things that have improved the quality of my video. So the first thing is that I shoot with an iPhone or the camera that I'm using right now or a GoPro. So those are my three means of making video. And no matter which way that you're gonna be recording your video, make sure that it's gonna be in your vertical format. So. If you're using a phone, you're gonna to wanna to shoot like this rather than like this. So it's gonna capture it vertically. If you're using a full frame camera, then you're gonna to wanna to just turn it sideways, get the vertical video that way. And then same thing for a GoPro, turn it sideways and get vertical video. With the GoPro, it's a little bit trickier though because you actually have to lock orientation. Otherwise it will try to just rotate it and adjust it for you. And you don't want it to do that because otherwise you'll still get a horizontal video. And the reason why we do this is just to maximize the quality of the video because you can still make vertical video for reels that fill up the whole screen with a horizontal video but you're gonna have to scale in a lot on the video, which is gonna reduce the quality significantly. So we're just gonna avoid that and get the highest quality recording from the get-go. So once you get your video, make sure to pop your SD card into your computer, or if you have a phone, plug it in your computer, get the files off. So now that we have the videos in the file explorer, what we're gonna wanna do is, depending on the type of software that you're using to edit everything, almost all of them, you're gonna be able to just drag the videos into the software and it'll pull it in for you. Otherwise you're gonna to have to do something like import. So you'll be able to import videos into your software of choice. I'm using Adobe Premiere and you can see down here in the left corner, these are all the video clips I have in this project here. So I already have a project laid out for us um, that I've been using and I'm gonna make a reel out of it. Just to speed up the process a little bit, you can go ahead and drag your videos into here. And then once you get some clips selected, you can drag them in just like so. So once you got them in your video, in your timeline, you're ready to start editing in vertical. Premiere Pro might open your sequence, so the video that we're looking at um, over here on the right, this is called the sequence. It might be looking kind of weird because if we shot in vertical, it's not gonna match up to the sequence that we loaded into probably. So what we can do is go to sequence settings and we can actually change that. So in this case, I shot at 30 FPS. So we're gonna keep the time base the same and you can change the frame size. So I shoot vertical 4K. A typical aspect ratio would be 16 by nine. That's for horizontal. For vertical, it's gonna be the, the opposite actually. It's nine by 16. So what we all we gotta do is in the frame size here is just switch these two numbers. And you can see I've already done that. And we're at nine by 16 rather than 16 by nine 4K. So now that we've done that, you can just press okay. And you should be able to see that on the right that your vertical video is filling all the gaps. There's no like black lines. It's not looking all weird. So then you can go ahead and just lay out all the video however you want it. Um, you can change the colors. You can do whatever you want. Just get a cool edit going and um, even add some audio. So this is a whole bunch of FPV video that I have it just kind of mashed up. And when everything's all said and done, the video clips are put together. They're all shot the same way. So when I put import them, everything in the timeline is the same. It's just a different video clip. You'll get the best quality that way. And then when you go to the export, you can press control M or command M probably if you're on Mac. Um, otherwise you can just go to file then export. And then once you're here, you can name it whatever you want in this file name section. And then you can change the location that you want it to save since this is just an example i'm going to leave it like that and then there's usually a preset video export now none of these are probably going to work for you so what i recommend is um, either creating a preset or just following these kinds of general settings so if you go under the little video tab here we're going to actually change the frame size so since we changed the sequence we can click match source and it will actually adjust it to be the same as uh, the whole sequence it's going to be this vertical video now and make sure it's in 4k and make sure that the frame rate match. It's important just to get the best quality. And we can actually go to more and just get the best quality out of this. So if you go to use maximum render quality, check that box. 
keep going down. Make sure that your color space is the same as we did it, as it is in the sequence. And in our case it is. If you scroll down even farther, you can see uh, the bitrate encoding. So VBR2 pass is gonna give you a much better export quality. And if you increase these values, it'll also get you a much better export quality at the cost of render time and file size is basically the trade-off. If you just want, without a doubt, really high quality videos that are being exported, you can do something crazy like 80, and then I always make this number bigger than the previous one, just because it's a maximum. So like 80 and 100, and if you do that, there's really no room for error in the export. It's gonna do the best job that it can. And now, if you're someone who's importing your files off your computer, to your iPhone. I have actually had issues with using what's called H.264. So if you export into H.264 in 4K vertical format, it actually won't let you put it into the Photos app before you upload to like Instagram or TikTok. And for a lot of people that's a big problem because you wanna have the highest quality possible, but you need to get it in your Photos app to then upload it to those apps. So I kinda found a couple workarounds there's two ways you can do this. You can either go back and undo everything we just did and uh, basically edit your vertical video sideways and export it sideways in 4K and get it on your phone. And then you can flip it in the Photos app back to vertical. That's one way. Another way is to switch your codec, your format, to H.265 also known as HEVC, and then follow the similar export settings as what we just used. So again, I have a preset already, but you're probably gonna have to make uh, your own. So again, just make sure that your frame size is in your vertical sequence format. Your frame rate's the same. You can scroll down, use maximum render quality, scroll down some more. This case, we can only use VBR one pass, but that's okay because I'm just gonna max it out. <laughs> and then quality is highest. So this export takes way longer than the H.264 format does. At, at least in my experience, that's what it seems like. Um, I think it is a higher quality export in terms of the way it does compression and all the nerdy stuff. So this is probably gonna take longer and result in a much larger file size, but you will be able to transfer 4K uh, vertical video onto your uh, photos app and then upload it onto your app of choice. So those are two ways to get the best quality uploads. And if you are struggling to get the photos or videos onto your phone, there's a couple tricks that I could share in another video probably because I had a little bit of issue doing that myself. If you're someone who uses like Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that, there is actually some compression done on your videos and photos, which will reduce the quality of your videos. So I don't recommend doing that. I plug in my phone directly into my laptop and then push the videos through the cable. And that's the best way to get the highest quality videos transferred. Anything over the internet is, is going to reduce the quality of your video. So yeah, that's pretty much my process. And um, if you guys think I missed something or if you have any other questions about how I do things and uh, what, what is or isn't working for you, please let me know and yeah, and I'll try to make a video in the future about it. Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to stick around for more videos coming in the future having to do with cameras, editing, drones, all that type of stuff. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to stick around, give me a like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.